Hi, this is Shelley Kraft. We're coming to you live on SNN Live. We're at the Israel Conference here in Los Angeles 2012. I have Ellie Groner, the Minister of Economic Affairs to the United States. He's out of the Israeli Embassy. And Ellie, welcome. Pleasure to be here. Thanks. It's good to have you. So, you spoke on a panel. You're bringing information and everything that's going on in Israel. I'm sure our listeners want to know. So, please give us the... 30,000 foot view. So, first of all, Shelley, thank you very much for, for having me on and letting me get the word out about Israel's innovation. Very often, particularly at conferences like this one, people think about innovation and they think, oh, Israel's technology sector is really what's driving innovation. And I'm here to tell you that innovation is a mindset. I know it sounds like a cliche, but innovation really is a mindset. It's a way you approach thinking about challenges. And Israel's got innovation. Its, per, its innovation permeates across a multitude of industries, a multitude of functions, a multitude of segments. It could be in business-to-business -business marketing. It could be in direct store distribution. It's across the spectrum. It's even in the way Israel approaches its government budgeting. So I would say that the mindset of innovation in Israel is really permeating across industries, functions, and customer segments. All right, now I'm going to give you the tagline for all of that, all right? If need is the father of innovation, then capability is the grandfather of innovation. Do you like that? I love it, but it's not just, I'll take it a step further, it's not just need, and it's not just uh, capabilities, it's also mindset. It's an attitude that says, I'm not going to accept this just because you say this is how it should be done. It's an attitude that's not just about, I know that this is how it's done everywhere else, therefore I'm going to do the same thing. No, when Israelis get best practice from elsewhere in the world, they challenge best practices. They want to know why their approach isn't better. They want to think about things and not accept it as it is just because that's how it is. But I have seen this more clear than I can imagine in my trips to Israel, and a, a little story, and I know I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to technology a minute. I once heard a story that Israeli, the Israeli Air Force buys U.S. jets and orders them without electronics <laughs> and puts all their own electronics in it. That's what you're talking about, but they do it across the board, of course. But it's not it's it's that, but it's also an entire approach to how things are done. I can't tell you. I did a lot of consulting work for prolific U.S. companies and a lot of consulting work for leading Israeli companies. And I can't tell you the number of times that Americans would say, you know what, the way you guys are doing things in Israel is really cutting edge. It's not just technology. It's how you approach farming. It's how you approach budgeting. It's how you approach uh, marketing from business to business. It's how you approach uh, a certain element of logistics. There's really an approach in Israel that says, I'm not going to be satisfied just looking at what the leading companies in the world are doing. I'm going to think about it individually. I'm going to think about it differently. And I challenge you to tell me that my way isn't better than yours. It's a mindset. It's and capabilities. I'm going to challenge you to tell me what's an, innova an innovative way for a micro cap company to funded. <laughs> you know, Israel is a great opportunity for value investors. Everyone thinks about, oh, how was, uh, you know, I wish I was around in the early 80s when there were great opportunities on Wall Street and I can invest in all these companies before everyone else found out about them. I'm here to tell you that there are a lot of companies like that in Israel that are a value investor's gold mine. Just struck, there's a lot of structural um, undervaluation on the Israeli capital markets for a number of reasons. Not enough equity research, um, not enough capital to expand, but if you want to know how do I how does a micro cap uh, company get funding, it's tell its story to the world, tell its story to investors, and find the appropriate value investors that are interested in getting in early. You just told our audience exactly what I've been telling them for years you got to get the word out. And now, when it comes to Israel, I have never been more fascinated by the, what you're talking about, the innovation. You know, you go to, in the, in the life sciences field, you know, you, you go to the Weizmann Institute, Technion. You can't believe what's going on there. And they do it because they won't take no for an answer. That's really what it's about. I want to tell you something. I have neighbors 
in Washington, D.C., Israelis that work at the National Institute of Health, and they tell me that, you know, the NIH attracts scientists from all over the world, and they'll say that certain scientists of certain ethnic groups, they'll approach a, a laboratory, and if whatever their experiment is doesn't work, they'll do it again the same exact way, the same exact way, the same exact way, until it works. Israelis, once it doesn't work, they're going to try something from the left. They're going to try something from the right. They're going to try something from the top. They're going to try something from the bottom. <laughs> Israelis are always looking for workarounds, for wraparounds. Now, there are drawbacks to that, but it also is a mindset. It goes back to the mindset of being innovative, not doing it just because this is the way the instruction book says you should do it, uh, taking different approaches to things. Life sciences is one example. Agriculture is another example. It's really across industries, and that's really my point. You're even innovative when it comes to explaining about the innovation of what's going on in Israel. I have to tell you that. You came across fantastically. Well, thanks very much. I guess it's part of my job. I want to thank you for coming on to SNL Live. Ladies and gentlemen, Ellie Groner, the Minister of Economic Affairs to the United States. He's out of the Israeli embassy. We're at the Israeli conference. We're in Los Angeles 2012. My new friend, well, Ellie very, Groner. Thanks very much for having me. I appreciate it. You got it.